Hello, can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so I have introduced your profile to the speaker. So now you can proceed with your session. Cool. Thank you. I'll just start my sharing. Uh, yes, we can see you in your audience. Cool. Can you all see my presentation? Yes. Oh, oh, just give me one moment. Yep. Uh, so hello and welcome to uh, Microsoft Biz Apps Urdu Hindi Bootcamp 2022. Uh, first of all, special thanks to our sponsors uh, because without them, this big session will not be possible. Uh, so now uh, officially starting now, um, greetings and thank you Pakistan user group for giving me an opportunity to present an exciting project to you to show, to show the power of robotic process automation using Power Automate Desktop. I will be taking you through a real world use case scenario to solve a manual time consuming process by using Power Automate Cloud and Power Automate Desktop. Uh, in this session, we will see how we triggered Cloudflow with Azure Blob Storage and process large files or um, large number of files uh, with Power Automate Desktop and input information to our legacy systems. So for, for those who don't know me yet, uh, my name is Zeeshan Said. I am working currently as a senior solutions architect as at National for Housing Finance and Investment Corporation. Mm -hmm. I am based in Sydney. I have more than 14 years of experience in delivering SME projects across various industries, including banking and finance, government, automotive, and retail. I'm also an active community member and love to give back to the community. I'll be also, I'll also be sharing my experience to my YouTube channel as well. Uh, if you'd like to uh, connect uh, with me, feel free to reach out to me on my social media or visit my website. So um, uh, let's move on to today's agenda. What I have for you guys to today. Uh, so today is like, uh, first we tap into what is actually robotic process automation, or we say RPA. Then we look at the real world scenario or uh, a use case that uh, what's the real manual time consuming problem is. And we'll, we will be discussing it, the solution as well. And we'll be having a deep dive what's under the bonnet for that particular solution. I'll be taking you through some quick tips around uh, when I'm giving you guys uh, a walkthrough to the entire solution. Uh, uh, following up that will be, uh, I'll be discussing what is next in this solution and what we are thinking, how we can expand the solution for uh, the enterprise level, following up with some Q and A sessions. So, before we start to talk about the Power Automate desktop, we need to know what is RPA. So RPA or robotic process automation is an intelligent automation of otherwise manual tasks. It helps to reduce the effort of repetitive manual tasks and thereby improve organizational efficiency. We can make a simple comparison with Excel macros, but with a lot of more features. So now that we know what RPA is, let's def, let's take a dive into what is Power Automate Desktop. The Power Automate Desktop is a Power Platform's Power Automate extension that use low just uses low code RPA to re record repetitive actions to your desktop like mouse clicks uh, and keyboard keystrokes as well. It uses those recording to recreate 
the process with automated executions. It works on many applications such as SharePoint, Excel, um, Outlook, and many other third party tools uh, or applications such as websites, external websites, intranet websites as well, um, ERP legacy systems, terminals, and so on. Um, now, in order to, and, and sorry, for example, in other words, you can say um, we can create an automation that will go through the needed actions to finish a specific tasks. Uh, it will also simplify your daily work uh, and enumerate uh, the potential human errors that can happen in a manual operations. Uh, so now let's take a real world examples how the manual and time consuming process will look like. So the manual process, so this is a real time process which we have um, um, automated. So the manual process and uh, the legacy process was we have, we have, we are getting the invoices from our suppliers. Well, when I say getting for invoices from our suppliers, like it's like few hundreds a day. So when we're getting and how we're getting the invoices, so the supplier used to send us the invoicing through emails. There is our operator to down save and download those in, uh, invoices in a secure storage in a network drive or any other storage network get the data from that invoices like uh, uh, who's who's the supplier what's the date what's the supplier code and what's the invoice number create an excel spreadsheet for that and at the end of the day uh, that operator upload that file into an accounting system and the accounting system will in process those invoices now this is this was like a huge manual work in which one of a dedicated resource is working or was working on this system a day. So one of our resource is used to download the invoicing, process those into an accounting system. So this is uh, this is his day to day job, right? So we need to automate this. Uh, so there can be several ways to achieve this through automation. A uh, few of them are like uh, we can monitor an email address to trigger a cloud flow as soon as the invoice email received, then download the attachment from an email and process it to future, uh, process it further. Or we can have uh, a SharePoint library and share, uh, with, different, uh, with different folders which we can share with our suppliers. They can upload the files. And uh, as soon as they upload the file into a SharePoint folder, we can uh, run a cloud flow and trigger this process. But we need it to do it in a much more secure manner and a proper manner, I can say. So we looked, we looked on the different approach. So what's the different approach is? We used, instead of using a SharePoint or a email trigger, we used Azure Blob Storage and enabled SFTP. Uh, functionality over this blob storage to create a secure channel for our, our suppliers. So all of our suppliers, so not all, each in, like individual suppliers have their own folders on uh, SFTP, which is linked or pointing to an Azure blob storage at the back. So uh, as soon as the, uh, the supplier needs to upload or send us an invoice, they just need to log into a SFTP um, uh, SFTP channel, upload the invoices. So as, if, as soon as they upload the invoices, the invoices will be stored into an Azure Blob Storage. So what we've done, so we created a cloud automated flow, which will continuously monitor as soon as the uh, file is, new file is added into a Blob Storage, it will grab the file and its contents and its information it trigger the power automate desktop flow. Then the desktop flow will download the files using Azure AZ file copy utility into a secure location. Update the same information what our operator needs to do 
in Excel spreadsheet, maintain a proper spreadsheet, upload that file into an accounting system and invoice will be processed. So as you can see on my really high level um, process diagram, there's no involvement of any operator at the moment. So this, with this automation, what we have done, we have taken out the entire manual process, which our resource needs to do. And the process is now automated uh, with, with no resource at all. And we are thus saving, uh, we're getting ROI on this uh, uh, investment. Now, how we did it actually? So as you can see on my screen, this is uh, Azure blob storage account. Uh, our vendors are uploading invoices over here. As soon as they upload the invoice, our cloud flow triggered. So as soon as the blob is added, it clicks, it grabs information and process through a power automate desktop flow, which we can say RPA tool. Then the RPA tool will kick off after that and download the file and do all sort of processing at the back of it. Download the file, store it in the proper location, update the Excel spreadsheet as we go. Then open up an accounting system and upload that Excel file for processing. So when I say upload an accounting system, so this, uh, I won't be able to uh, uh, give a demo uh, to you guys uh, on this accounting system so for, for obvious reasons, because it's an accounting system and thus for security reasons, uh, I won't be able to show you, but I will be taking you through how we did it. Now, uh, We'll see what's under the bonnet. It looks very really pretty, uh, pretty cool that uh, it's easy to make an uh, power automate flow with the desktop flow and um, how we process it. But actually, how it will look like, I'll give you a demo on that. So first thing first is the power automate cloud flow. Let me open it. So you can see on my screen, uh, we have used a blob storage, which kicks off and uh, process the invoices and triggers a power automate desktop flow. But there's a catch over here. So when we are uh, building this functionality, we obviously has uh, one location which all the invoices comes in. Comes in. But uh, when so there's a quick. This is a quick tip for uh, everyone. So when you have multiple folders on your blob storage, this connector will not work because it will only point to a particular location. So in order to uh, to achieve the same thing with multiple folders or uh, nested folders as well, we need to use the another connector, which is called Azure Event Grid Connector. So with the, with using Azure Event Grids, we can easily tap into any folder or uh, uh, trigger it for the entire um, storage account as well. So if you guys need to tap into uh, all the nested folders, please don't use this, use the Azure Grid uh, event grid connector. So coming back to our um, flow. So this will, uh, as you can see over here, we have made a desktop uh, desktop connection into a power automated desktop flow. We are running as an attended mode uh, because we have uh, to, uh, the same license, attended license as well. We, if we have an unattended license, we can use unattended flow as well. Passing uh, some uh, useful information and kicking off a power automated desktop flow. So as you can see on my screen, I have in my uh, local piece machine, I have a power automated desktop flow. 
the interesting part comes when we look at this. Cool. So what we've done, we have set up a few variables, getting some um, current date and time, grabbing some or extracting some data from uh, the cloud for which we got it, uh, executing some um, Azure copy commands from through the DOS, open up Excel and do all the magic over here. So I'll I'll take a, a one more step back and give you guys uh, all the information what we what we have done over here. So we created a, a we created a blob storage link, uh, pass on the blob storage link, set up some variables, grab a current date and time, and grab some data from uh, the Cloudflow. Over here, what we are doing, we are running a DOS command, which is used to trigger uh, an, uh, an Azure copy, AZ file copy utility passing the parameters from where we need to download the file and where and from where to where. Uh, and what's the working folder for that particular utility is. So this event is driving the entire process of downloading the file. Why we have used the Azure copy? There are multiple uh, ways we can achieve this. We can um, download a file into SharePoint uh, itself as well. We can also download the file into OneDrive and few different uh, storage locations. But why we uh, did Azure copy functionality? Because in the other um, approaches, there's a limitation of um, file size. I think it's 11 MB or something like around that. But with Azure file copy, you can download GBs of file as well. So for example, if, if I receive a file, a zip file, worth of like eight gigabytes, I can still download it from the Azure file, uh, AZ file copy as well. So that's the main reason we have used uh, AZ copy functionality over here. After that, uh, as soon as we receive the file, it will be located, it will be downloaded into, uh, into our uh, uh, local storage location, which as you can see on my screen, this is all being downloaded from uh, AZ file copy. As soon as this downloads, the event will occur and we launch an Excel. So as you can see, we are launching an Excel. We are making it as not visible. Then after the, as straight after that, we need to update the information into Excel spreadsheet as a new row. So in order to get a new row, we need to first find out what row is free. First row is free. So this event is following up as uh, is giving us an information that this row, the next row is free, which index the next row is free. Then we are writing it on the Excel spreadsheet. We are writing a file name, worksheet, sorry, file name, current date and time, vendor or supplier code, and what the Azure path is, and then closing the Excel file. So this, this is everything's uh, so we don't need to, uh, so when we receive a file, everything's done at the back. We don't need to see, or we are not able to see anything. It's all done at the background. We can also uh, uh, enable it, uh, make visible so that we can we can see how it will be working. But for now, we, we have turned it off and everything running at the background. So after this process is done, it will update the Excel file and we can see the Excel file like this. So you can see as soon as the process is working or is, uh, has been uh, triggered, it extracts the invoice number from the name, extract the date, extract the vendor code from the invoice number and the file path. So this file is technically ready to use uh, and, and to, and, um, and ready to import in our accounting system. So um, no manual work, we've automated the entire thing. So the thing which is missing over here is um, the way to open up uh, an accounting system. 
logging in into an accounting system and um, uploading a file into an accounting system. So the how we did it, I'll, I'll show you a quick tip on that as well. So there's a record button or re, uh, record button over here. Yeah. We can record all of our steps, what we need to do over here. So over here you can see I can launch a Chrome browser or any browser. As soon as I hit over here, it launches a window and launches a new step. I can browse through my accounting system. I can log in and record all of these steps. And when I hit done straight away after this, you can see uh, it creates a new step on my on my flow. I can drag and drop all uh, this step into a last step. And um, for example, if I have if on this screen, I just open up a new uh, Chrome window. But in the real time, I have like we have what we have done, open up a, an accounting system or a legacy accounting system, like you can say, login into uh, the accounting system with the with the proper credentials, upload it, located a file, upload a file, and just did it. So in this way, the file is also uploaded in the system as well. And it's done the entire thing uh, at a click of a button. So in the real time scenario, we haven't uploaded, we didn't upload the file because the file needs to be uploaded into uh, on the, uh, at the end of the day. So what we have done, we have created one more uh, cloud flow, which will trigger, which will trigger uh, at the end of the day, which will also trigger one more de power, des uh, power automate desktop uh, flow, which will uh, then uh, open up a accounting system and upload the file over there. So this is uh, uh, the way we have uh, achieved uh, the entire process and uh, taken out the manual uh, manual process from our uh, from our overhead things. Now, uh, so this is just a, a a simple example which we which I have just simulated uh, with you guys. But um, uh, in the real time, we have a lot of um, error handlings uh, in this uh, flow. We have one more uh, um, uh, feature. Uh, so, for example, if so, currently you are only viewing um, a text file, which are uh, uh, the invoice files, text files, and invoice files. But in real life, uh, in real time, we receive uh, invoicing in different formats as well, like PDFs, uh, JPEG images. Uh, sometimes we receive a zip file the containing all thousands or hundreds of uh, invoicing, which have uh, which has a bigger size as well. So uh, we have used over here um, So we unzip. So as soon as we received a zip file, we unzip the files, extract the files into our folders using the compression tool, which is already available in uh, Power Automate RPA tool. And um, we then process it uh, into our local drives and uh, updated uh, Excel spreadsheets as well. So um, this is a uh, yeah. This is a short. Uh, quick demo of how we did it. We can do much more things by using this similar tool. Uh, as you can see, we can um, upload or download a file from an SFTP or FTP locations as well using the FTP connectors, which are available only in, uh, not only in uh, Power Automate desktop, but Power Automate uh, Cloud Flows as well. Can record some mouse clicks. Um, can convert a PDF file into uh, a text file or can extract images from a PDF file as well, but that's what we are doing. And uh, if you need to create some alerts and notification in the back of it, we can also use the email uh, uh, tools from here and use the same thing. So instead of like uh, one more example, I can, uh, I can provide you guys that Instead of our legacy system, if we used to have um, an API or um, for the system, 
And uh, if we have any database available for the system, for example, SQL, Oracle, or uh, DB2, we can also use the same Power Automate desktop flow to inject or to insert the information, the invoice information, not or bypass from Excel into directly into a system. So this will um, uh, this will reduce a lot of steps as well but unfortunately we have a, a legacy systems a terminal window type of thing and we used to we are bound to use that so uh yeah so uh with this uh approach uh we, get, we have saved uh, a whole resource cost and thus we have dedicated that resource into another uh productive work as well now coming back to uh to a presentation. So what's next? So what we are doing next for this particular uh, flow or enhancing this flow, we are also enabling artificial intelligence or AI to process the invoicing using uh, invoice process automation. We are also thinking to develop and invoice tracking systems for our suppliers. So when they upload the invoicing, uh, we process the invoice, it will be available in the system as well. And uh, with that, uh, we are also uh, thinking to create a, a bot, an AI bot on the top of that. So for example, if supplier doesn't want to uh, log into a system and check it, uh, we have a web bot available on our website. Uh, supplier can pass their invoice numbers and uh, bot can uh, tap into a system and can get the information. Either is this invoice is processed or not and give the information to the suppliers. Also following up on, on this, we are uh, creating some automated alerts to notify, uh, to send some notification alerts to managements, so uh, in-house managements and suppliers when they have some uh, invoice are processed if their uh, supply, if their invoices are uh, on hold or sort of like that. The last thing, we are also creating some cool dashboards using the Power BI tool as well. Uh, so with this, uh, I think I'm uh, pretty much <laughs> completed uh, before time. So if you guys have any questions um, or feedback, feel free to, um, yeah, to, to jump in. Then if you want to uh, connect with me. So if anybody can... has a question, you can please ask now or you can you can please also ask in the chat so that Asishan can respond. I think uh, there's no question, guys. Uh, thank you very much. And thanks uh, to uh, the organization, uh, right. organizers uh, and uh, our sponsors as well. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Zishan. Thank you so much for your time. If anybody has questions, you can uh, please ask on the chat um, or if Zishan, will you be able to answer them via LinkedIn or, or some other channel?